Welcome back to the Linet Lab. My name is Peter O'Donnell. This is part three in a series where I'm looking at mall formation and what various teams are doing to put teams under pressure. Following the first two parts, I got some uh, good feedback by and large and uh, a few interesting comments, usually one or two in jest, suggesting the mall shouldn't be part of the game. So I wanted to start by actually showing why it's an important part of the game and most good teams also have a good mall. And if you have a good mall, it also gives you the opportunity to, to try little trick plays or peels or breakouts, attack the seams, um, because teams have to respect your maul first and foremost. So if you have a really good maul, it can actually lead to, to putting teams under pressure in other ways. So in this part, I'm going to look at the Ripper in particular, uh, which ties in then with the actual formation of what we looked at so far. Before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen where you get access to loads of additional content from me. Please also like and share the video to help the discussion grow. Thank you. In the first clip, we see a seven man lineup from Harlequins here where the ball is ripped and then transferred back to the hooker at the back of the mall. So a front wall of three, a second line of four, and then the hooker coming in at the back, as I say. This would be a fairly common traditional type setup. We then see a very similar approach of a six plus one line out from Ulster here, where we have a front wall of three, a second line of three, and then the last two men coming at the back of the line out with the hooker being one. So making it a three, three, two type setup, but the hooker is getting the ball um, at the back of the mall from the person who ripped it initially. In this line out from the Crusaders, we're gonna see something a little bit different. The ball is gonna be one in the middle of the line out. We'll have a front wall of three, a second line of three, but then we're gonna see the last man of the line out come in and get the ball off the person who ripped it and then transfer it back to the hooker. So three people get their hands on the ball, which is a little bit different than what we see traditionally, but it does enable the Crusaders to get a bit more length in their mall. And because they keep their front wall together, they're able to build on that platform and uh, put the blues under pressure. In this next clip, we're gonna see the Sharks employ a method that was banned a couple of years ago but up until then, a number of teams employed it, where we'll see the ripper coming in and almost slide back, allowing them to get the ball to the back of the mall as quickly as possible. You'll actually see this quite often in the game at the moment, but it's quite hard for referees to pick it up because a number of teams do it quite well. This last clip is actually something that's really well worked by the Bulls in their semi-final win in last year's URC against Leinster, where we'll actually see this man circled in pink be the ripper on a six plus one line out which is a little bit different than what we see traditionally uh, and, and, in the, and in the clips we've seen already. So even though there's a plus one, it's that man in pink who actually rips on the ball and uh, it basically enables the Bulls to add more weight on the open side, giving them a whip or an opportunity to whip around the corner and put Leinster under pressure, which results in this penalty try. So the replay actually gives us a really good clear shot of it where we have a back lifter and then two men who bind on the back lifter and then the plus one coming behind those two guys and then that, as i say that man who was at the front of the line out ripping which gives them a great opportunity to uh, get that whip around the corner as i say so all in all some really interesting strategies and methods for ripping the ball and this season i'm really looking forward to see what teams try and do to get on the front foot as always thanks for watching let me know your thoughts